Excellent. All right. Uh, can everybody see my screen share? Can I get a thumbs up from anybody? Or we're all good? Seeing my uh, presentation? Excellent. Thank you, Roland. All right. Um, so this is, uh, so welcome everybody. This is uh, the second in our SEAL virtual training series uh, about citizen science and the eclipses. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, programming, specifically kind of a step-by-step -step process on how to host a daytime star party uh, as an example of how to do citizen science uh, at your library. Uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so we've had a couple changes. So we're waiting for uh, some of our presenters. Uh, Claire Radcliffe Adams, uh, who's an education associate at the Space Science Institute, should be joining us shortly. Darlene, unfortunately, wasn't able to make it. Uh, so instead, we have uh, Roland uh, Mondalek from uh, who's tuning in all the way from Lebanon. Uh, so making time late at night for us tonight. Really appreciate that, Roland. Uh, my name is Dylan Connolly. My pronouns are he and they. I'll be kind of uh, captaining the ship today. Uh, but this is really all about uh, sharing ideas about y'all. So I like to think of this as a collective uh, webinar meeting today. Um, so as for our agenda, um, we'll start out with a little bit of an introduction uh, to this uh, and an icebreaker. Uh, then we'll go into a brief introduction to the SEAL project if you are unfamiliar with the SEAL project and uh, give you some information there. And then we're going to go step by step on uh, kind of an example of how to build a program out like a daytime star party. So we'll learn um, how to uh, a daytime star party all, and incorporating citizen science into that. So we'll uh, start with learning and sharing, uh, how to learn and share the basics of citizen science, uh, how to choose a citizen science project uh, for your audience, how to uh, plan an event or a program, uh, how to register your event with Science Starter so that that word can get out about there, uh, how to promote your event, all through providing some resources for you as well as we're going to open up the floor talk um, and hopefully some of y'all will be comfortable sharing how you promote events so we can share some ideas on how to uh, among y'all librarians about how to do that uh, and then we'll open up the floor for a q a um, uh, so just so everybody knows um, if you have to take off at any point in this meeting we will be we are recording this we'll be posting uh, this uh, link to our youtube channel as well as uh, sharing that out uh, on the pay, web, webinar page uh, that you might have registered for, through StarNet for this. So we will be we will be recording and posting uh, this. So don't worry if uh, you miss any portion of it, have come late, anything like that. So um, I thought I'd start with a great icebreaker. So one of the cool things about uh, citizen science and the eclipse is that citizen science is a great way to connect your community with big ideas around the world, uh, about the world around us. And considering that we're going to be having two total eclipses and about six months apart from each other, they're going to be visible uh, anywhere in the U.S., uh, that's a really great way to tie citizen science together, which is a participatory science uh, type of thing, uh, along with the, the participation in the eclipses by doing eclipse events at your library. Um, so just to get us thinking along those lines, I thought I would open it up to y'all. Feel free to unmute if you're comfortable, um, or uh, if you want to share this in the chat, um, what are some ways that in the past you've connected your community to big ideas at your library? Doesn't necessarily have to be STEM, but like what are some ways that you've drawn some connections between your community and some big global or nationwide ideas? I'll share out for, uh, I was lucky enough, um, while you're always thinking, uh, I was lucky enough in 2017 to be working at a small natural history museum in Rhode Island and uh, connecting people uh, when, when the total eclipse happened that was viewable nationwide, the Great American Eclipse. Uh, being there and doing programming around the eclipse at that museum was one of the, my, the best times I've ever had as an educator. It was so cool to see people connected to uh, the eclipse, something that's really, uh, it has been studied and observed for by humans for millennia uh, and really to just see people's wonder in their eyes when they saw something so cool uh, and create such a cool connection to the universe to the world around us was really really nice uh, Judy just shared in the chat uh, that they visit their school to get students and teachers excited prior to an event that's a really great way to make a connection uh, Janet just shared that they had folks sign up to get their names on Mars during their space camp program. Uh, that's really cool. I like that. So you can have a, if you put your name out in the stars on a different planet. Uh, Tammy said they use social media, school flyers, newsletters, uh, which is also really good. Being cognizant of many different ways to create connections uh, with your community is all is really, really important. Um, 
Katie said, not really science related, but our library program does a Star Wars Reads program each year and gets lots of participation. I disagree. I think that's totally science related. Uh, myself, I know that part of my fascination with space uh, is in large part due to Star Wars. And the, even though Star Wars isn't the most uh, scientifically accurate of space films, I think that uh, wonder and adventure are a really great way to get people interested in these kind of different topics. Um, so I am stoked to hear the, uh, uh, as a lifelong Star Wars fan, it thrills me that we're uh, doing some Star Wars programming that passes the, the joy of Star Wars onto a next generation, hopefully get some people interested in space. Um, excellent, excellent. Uh, does anybody else want to share anything out in the chat or unmute? Oh, Christina said we had a local astronomy society come and explain what an eclipse is and we're the best place to see one during the last eclipse. That's fantastic. We'll actually be talking a little bit today about uh, ways you might be able to connect with local astronomy clubs uh, to find people to come to your eclipse events if that's something you're interested in. Uh, Brenda said I also have sign-in sheets at events where people can put their email address. I put uh, it in a distribution list and invite them to future events. That's really a great point, making connections with your community by having them at one event and connecting with them to see if they want to come to later events. It's a really great way to build a loyal audience. Uh, Janet said we had a maple sugaring program where we signed families up to be the bucket emptiers every few days. We taught them the difference between real maple syrup, maple sap, and how to make their own maple syrup. That sounds fantastic. I would sign up for that program in a heartbeat. I'm a big food fan and maple syrup is one of my favorite flavors. So it's teaching people about the process and that differences is really, really cool. Uh, Lori said they gave out glasses at the last eclipse, had a viewing party with a telescope. Also really great. We're actually gonna be talking a little bit today, if y'all haven't signed up for how to get some free eclipse glasses for your library events. Uh, excellent. All right, well, thanks so much for sharing out everybody. Um, Oh, we got one more coming in. Donna said, we've done all the GLOBE programs with all ages. Oh, fantastic. We're actually going to be doing another webinar coming up on May 4th with GLOBE Observer um, and uh, talking about their Eclipse-specific uh, program. Uh, so if you are interested, uh, that link that I put in the chat, I'll put it in right here now. Um, if you want to register for one of our up, uh, for that May 4th webinar uh, where we talk about Globe Observer, if you've not been uh, exposed to Globe Observer before, really, really cool program. Uh, but Don was saying they did several different types of take home kits on various topics like backyard astronomy, biodiversity, pollinators, light pollution, weather, and several others. Very, very cool. All right. So it sounds like y'all have already been starting to make these connections in your communities, uh, really thinking uh, about uh, how these big ideas can uh, be even though they're really big, by making connections with your community, we can make them bite size and really start to uh, develop a cool relationship between these big nationwide or global ideas and your local community at your local library. Um, all right, so oh, we've just been joined by Claire Radcliffe Adams. Uh, thanks, uh, Claire, uh, who is also from SSI. Um, and uh, Claire will be assisting us and talking to us a little bit uh, through some of the programming stuff we're gonna be doing today. So I thought I would start out. Um, so this webinar today uh, that we're doing uh, in partnership with SciStarter um, is funded by a couple of different groups, um, but we're largely, uh, is, is, uh, excuse me, the funding is coming from uh, SEAL where we're getting from the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. And the SEAL project is building off of SSI's work for, for that 2017 eclipse. And we are trying to go even bigger than we did in 2017. Uh, so available through the SEAL project, uh, you can sign up for up to 2,000 uh, free Eclipse classes for your library. Um, the link of which, uh, the link to that application is in the Getting Started with Seal blog post that I'm putting in the chat right now. Um, and once you're signed up for, to get those free glasses and it's no strings attached, you just have to sign up for the glasses and you get them. Uh, there's no reporting, pro programming requirements, anything like that. Just uh, You can just get those free glasses. Um, we are doing in-person trainings in all 50 states and four territories about the Eclipse and Eclipse programming. Uh, so if you're interested in attending one of those, we started them already. I think we've done about 10 states or so far. We're working our way through the list. I want to say 10, 10 to a dozen, something like that. But we have upcoming trainings. Contact your state library if you're interested in attending one of those. Uh, we have recorded training videos and virtual workshops, virtual workshops just like the one you're in right now, as well as putting all of these recordings of these virtual workshops and how-to videos up on our YouTube channel. Yep, Claire is actually uh, uh, is in New York leading one of those workshops right now. Uh, we're very, <laughs> Claire very graciously 
got into her hotel and immediately uh, signed on to join us today. Uh, so uh, we're, we're actively doing it. We're coming to you. Um, we also have uh, some fantastic circulating kits. Uh, at state libraries, um, we have two, we're sending out four kits per state um, and that have things like uh, solar telescopes, uh, books, hands-on activities, and those are uh, really great for you to check out from your state library uh, to run programming uh, around citizen science, the eclipse, solar science, uh, because this is NASA's year of heliophysics. Uh, all of those are available to your state library. I highly recommend getting in contact with your state library if you want to get your hands on one of those. Um, we're also offering access to scientists, volunteers, Eclipse subject matter experts, and other librarians through our StarNet online community. If you go ahead and register for your glasses, um, you can go ahead and uh, you'll be automatically registered for our StarNet community site and our Eclipse group, uh, where we are uh, connecting you librarians with subject matter experts, us here at SSI, uh, all sorts of different folks to talk and share ideas around Eclipse programming. Uh, there's some really cool conversations uh, that are uh, happening there. Uh, if you would like to get uh, in on that and you uh, or don't want to sign up for classes, feel free to reach out uh, to me and I can go ahead and direct you to who you need to talk about, uh, talk to you about getting involved on that, uh, getting registered for that website and getting signed up for our newsletter. Uh, I'm going to put my email address in the chat right now. That's dconnelly at spacescience.org. Uh, I can help you get registered for that uh, for that newsletter and on the community site if that's something you're interested in. If perhaps you don't want to sign up for the free glasses or you a colleague has signed up for the glasses, but you still want to keep abreast of all things steel, uh, go ahead and reach out to me and I will get that uh, information to you. Uh, so some information on just getting started with steel. Uh, I've been putting the link to the getting started with steel blog post in our chat. Uh, you can also, if you're watching this recording at home or you're checking out the slide deck uh, that we'll be posting uh, online with the uh, recorded version of the webinar, you can pull up this QR code, which will take you to that blog post. Uh, that SEAL Resources blog post has, once again, those links to register for classes. Uh, and then once you get that, you'll be on our newsletter. Um, we also have an FAQ webinar that's on our uh, YouTube page. The link to that is in the Getting Started with SEAL blog post. Uh, and if you this is your first exposure to SEAL and would like to attend a live Getting Started with SEAL webinar, uh, we're doing those monthly, uh, starting next month through August. Uh, so the registration link uh, to that is in that Getting Started with Steel blog post as well. So I'd love for you to come and join me. Uh, we're going to be doing those monthly webinars, getting you acquainted with all things SEAL, uh, and, and uh, hopefully connecting you with some cool resources to get started with the Eclipse. Uh, so that's my little SEAL spiel, uh, spiel, uh, spiel, spiel. That was harder to say than I thought it would be. Uh, so that's my SEAL spiel. Uh, and now uh, we are going to turn this over and we're going to start talking about how to get started with citizen science, learn the basics of citizen science, and we're going to hand that over to Roland from Science Starter, who's going to talk a little bit about that. So take it away, Roland. Thank you. So uh, starting with the basics of uh, citizen science, and I'll be posting some links from Science Starter. Uh, citizen science uh, is simply a way for everyone to participate in scientific research, in real research, and to obtain uh, answers to uh, questions which otherwise wouldn't be uh, so easy for conventional research to obtain them. So uh, we also offer, offer trainings uh, about citizen science, including the foundations one, and uh, another one about uh, libraries as community hubs for citizen science. You basically have to start with the foundations, foundations training, uh, earn your badge and proceed with the other ones. Uh, so next slide, please. So uh, we have more than a thousand projects on SciStarter. Actually, we currently have 1,518 active projects and uh, they are all easily searchable by topic, by location, by affiliate status. And uh, affiliate projects are ones that when you participate in, you can earn credit on your SciStarter dashboard. So it's a way to combine all your efforts from the various citizen science platforms into your unified size starter dashboard. Uh, 
and uh, we've also created the Eclipse page recently, which lists many Eclipse related projects. So uh, several projects in this page uh, for a total of 15 projects, several ones uh, can be contributed to any time. But uh, obviously they are particularly more interesting to, to try during the Eclipse. And now we will see why in the next slide, please. Okay, so before we see the actual projects, uh, here are some tips to plan your event. So if you want to participate in citizen science, uh, whether before, during, or after the eclipse, you have, well, uh, first and foremost, uh, the most important thing is to actually enjoy the eclipse. And uh, when you want to start some event, uh, start by collecting data before the eclipse to, to garner enthusiasm. And you may be too busy the day of the eclipse to devote time to collecting data. Holding a project after the eclipse can encourage patrons to return. And there are projects for everyone, even if you are not on the path of annularity totality. And as we will see in the next slide, some projects can be done online without being uh, in on location. Okay, so these are the 15 projects that are currently listed on uh, sistarter.org slash eclipse. So Aurora Soros is the project which you can, <clears throat> sorry, contribute to any time of the year. And you have the option of either submitting sightings or if you don't have uh, access or you didn't see any sighting, you can simply uh, classify tweets about Aurora's. So uh, it's, it basically search, searches the Twitter database for posts that include uh, the word auroras. And you simply have to filter out the ones that are used in the context of this natural phenomenon. Another project is Citizen K to make observations of the inner and middle solar corona. Then we have Citizen Weather Observer Program, do-it-yourself relativity test. Uh, and by the way, we are always adding new projects uh, to, to our database. Some of these are have been recently added. Eclipse ballooning project uh, for students to conduct high altitude balloon flights. And many of these projects have already been conducted during the 2017 Eclipse. Uh, and uh, they are being planned again this year. Eclipse mega movie, this one is also interesting uh, when everyone shared their photos or even videos of the sun during the eclipses to end up with one video. So if you visit uh, this project site on SciStarter, this project page, uh, you will have access to a video that shows the end work. And it's really interesting how combining photos from uh, several locations and several devices uh, can be uh, that interesting. Eclipse Soundscapes is another interesting project, which when we added not long ago was still uh, under development. But one of their interesting features is the vibration map, if I'm not mistaken. And it allows people who cannot see the eclipse to feel it on their screen. So you'll have uh, a photo of the eclipse on your screen. And as you move your uh, finger over the eclipse, uh, the phone will start vibrating more and more depending on how dark uh, your screen is. Uh, Globe at Night uh, is a project which you can participate any time of the year, but it would be very interesting to, to contribute during the eclipse. Globe Observer Eclipse. So uh, this NASA project uh, that has several protocols, uh, Globe Observer has a land uh, cover and mosquito habitat mappers and uh, cloud and this Eclipse one. And I think there's a fifth one, but the Eclipse protocol can only be accessed during the Eclipse. So if you download the app uh, today, you won't be able to see it. 
And even then, it will employ some uh, aspects from the clouds protocol uh, to observe, to take cloud observations and make air temperature measurements. Uh, so obviously, you can do a lot with just your mobile device. But if you have access to a thermometer or depending on the project to another device, it will be uh, even more valuable. Uh, next, HAMSI. So if you are a ham radio operator, you will also help understand Earth's ionosphere. iNaturalist uh, is a very popular project, which, uh, which can be very important during the eclipse because as you record biodiversity sightings, uh, the thing that, we, that we're most interested to see is uh, how during the eclipse some nocturnal animals will uh, come out so uh, we would be able to see such observations on iNaturalist during times of the day which aren't common usually uh, IC change is similar to iNaturalist more related to uh, climate change and weather solar active region spotter uh, this is an interesting universe project just like many universe projects and it has a very detailed uh, tutorial so that's the nice thing about universe is that uh, as soon as you enter the project page you, you won't necessarily understand what you're seeing maybe it would be graphs or images but if you go through the tutorial you will you will get up to speed in no time and you will feel how you are doing uh, some advanced, some real science in the process. Solar Jet Hunter, another interesting project, and the Sun Grazer project to find comets in our solar system online. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, these are, we covered them. iNaturalist, Glow Observer Eclipse, which will be available during the eclipse and the eclipse soundscapes. And Roland, I'll just uh, pop in here real quick. Uh, so um, the uh, Globe Observer Eclipse and the Globe Observer Soundscapes uh, uh, projects are all about gathering data during the eclipse itself. Um, we're actually going to be hosting the two, the next two webinars in this series on May 4th uh, and May 15th, I want to say May 15th. Uh, we'll say May 15th, May 16th, something like that. Check. Uh, I'll, I'll check in just a second. But we're, the next two webinars uh, are going to be actually uh, co-hosted with folks from Globe Observer and the Eclipse Soundscapes Project. Uh, so if you're interested in participating uh, in those citizen science projects on the days of both the annular and total eclipses in October and April, uh, we're going to be hosting webinars specifically about about those projects and how to get involved. So keep an eye, uh, go ahead and the, the links to uh, register for those are also on that Getting Started with Field blog post. Uh, Roland, I'll hand it back to you. So uh, yeah, this is the, the size starter stuff we wanted to share. And again, if you go to the Eclipse page, I'm going to post the link again, you'll find these very same projects with descriptions and the links. You, you'll have the link to the project page on site starter to have more information and the link, uh, the direct link to the project's website right from the Eclipse page. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Roland. So I just want to point out before we, uh, Claire takes over to talk about uh, planning your events. So the great thing about this is uh, Science Starter has actually set up that page, the Eclipse page that is focused specifically on uh, Eclipse events and getting citizen science projects for uh, Eclipse focused and solar science events. Uh, but I highly recommend checking out all of Science Starter's projects. Um, even if you are planning on doing some Eclipse or solar event programming, maybe you live in like a really wooded area and maybe a biodiversity uh, 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 citizen science project would be more important for uh, uh, more appropriate for you or maybe there's like an urban observation citizen science project that you can participate in even if you're doing a solar event uh, uh, or eclipse event um, there's tons of options out there um, and what's great about science starter is their project finder you can narrow it down by whether or not the the citizen science project can be fully remote is online uh, the age levels uh, you can put the uh, 
uh, visitors who might want to participate in that. Um, so as you're planning your daytime star party or eclipse event, uh, there's tons of science, citizen science options out there outside of the scope of just solar science uh, and eclipse science. Well, we really want to encourage you to uh, participate in any solar science and eclipse projects that we have out there. Um, there's tons of options, so I highly invite you to, to to explore the SciStarter website and uh, find some projects that might be great for your library, even if they're outside of the scope of the eclipse. Uh, so now to talk a little bit about prepping and planning for uh, a citizen science event at your library, I'll hand this over to Claire. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, I feel like a lot of what I'm going to cover, libraries are also are already amazing at. Um, but just to note, with a lot of those citizen science projects that Roland covered. Uh, many of them do require some sort of tech equipment, um, ranging from yeah an air thermometer to um, audio devices. And there are a lot of um, resources out there to help you get those tools if you do not have them already. Um, as Dylan said, we're going to be hosting a webinar on May 4th with Globe Observer. Um, they're actually putting together kits that you can apply for that you will receive all of the equipment that you need. Um, so please join us on May 4th to learn how you can apply for that. Uh, but they'll be sending out um, materials to give to patrons such as pinhole viewers and cloud uh, charts that help you identify the, the features in the sky that they're looking to, uh, for data for. Uh, but they will also be sending digital thermometers um, that you can use to collect data. And then um, the other thing is a lot of these science, citizen science projects do require that you submit the data into their databases using either a web-based platform or an app. Um, so the Globe Observer, you would need to download an app for. So just make sure, you know, before you commit to signing up to one of these projects, you really read through the requirements that they need for the tech equipment. Um, the Soundscapes uh, Citizen Science Project, that uh, includes a little audio audio device. Um, they're really interested in understanding what sounds we hear during an eclipse. Um, so since the earth, you know, depending on where you are in the path, um, will become a little bit shaded through the shadow of the moon, it has impacts on our animal life. Um, and so birds tend to quiet down a little bit, crickets might start chirping. And so Soundscapes is really interested in collecting audio data, which is really exciting and a way for um, visitors and patrons of your libraries with visual impairments to experience the eclipse and collect some data. Um, but just like Globe Observer, um, we are partnering with them to provide libraries within the state of Texas to receive those audio device recorders for free. Um, so that's the, the second webinar in May. You can learn how you can apply for, to receive one of those. But even if you don't receive one through us, they have some scholarship programs on their website. So there are ways if you don't have these tech equipment to um, obtain them. Um, but you know, it does require a little bit of work on your part just to do some research and figure out what it is that you need. Um, so yeah, just just uh, as, as part of really um, standardizing all of the data that these scientists are using in their projects, there are certain protocols and certain equipment that you are required to use. So just be sure that you have those on hand when you're signing up for these projects. Next slide, please. So another great way to um, bolster your citizen science programs with your patrons is to invite speakers. Um, these are two links for uh, access to subject matter experts, especially around eclipse programming. Um, so we have NASA's Night Sky Network, um, and that's nightsky.jpl.nasa.gov. And I believe that link is on the um, Getting Started with SEAL blog. Um, you can also reach out to NASA's Solar System Ambassadors. That's solarsystem.nasa.gov slash solar system ambassadors slash events. Um, all of the people within these networks have been trained um, by NASA and they are they range from sort of more amateur astronomers to really experienced astronomers. And they have uh, uh, subject matter experts in almost every single state. Um, so I encourage you to reach out to them. Some of them have more experience on the subject matter expert side. Some of them have a lot of great facilitation experience. Um, we just invited one of the solar system ambassadors in the state of 
Colorado to join us for one of our training workshops. And I kind of expected them to, you know, just have all of the scientific jargon and which would still be really interesting, but she came in with activities, with prizes, like ready to go, so much fun. Um, so there's really a wide range of uh, speakers that you can get. Um, also, I want to put a plug in for um, your state's master naturalist. Um, if you're doing one of the citizen science projects, such as the iNaturalist one, where you're really looking at the biodiversity, um, what animals are coming out, what is happening to the plants, you know, when we uh, lose the intense sunlight for a few minutes. Um, naturalists around the country are getting really excited to experience the eclipse and are looking for public programming. So I know, especially in Texas, uh, Texas is an area of the country that is going to get complete 100% annularity in October, as well as totality in April 2024. So there is a lot of excitement if you're in that area. Um, I know that the Master Naturalists of Texas are really looking for programs to be a part of for the eclipse. So think about inviting speakers that takes a little bit of the pressure off of you to be the holder of the knowledge. You know, you can invite a subject matter expert and give that opportunity to your visitors as well as you're collecting data and contributing to the scientific field. One other thing we're going to be doing through the SEAL project is we are actually going to be compiling our own database of solar science uh, subject matter experts and eclipse experts. Um, we are currently working on that. We're recruiting them right now. If you need more incentive to sign up for your free uh, solar, science, uh, uh, solar viewing glasses, as well as getting on that community site and our newsletter, um, we will be announcing uh, when we roll that out uh, through those channels. So uh, you should definitely get signed up for our newsletter and register for those classes if you want information on how to get the uh, access to the, that directory of solar science experts as well. So there's a lot of options uh, for you to finding guest speakers. Yeah, Sorry, thanks, that. Dylan. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's perfect. That's actually my next slide. I was going to put a plug in for our community site. We have gotten feedback from libraries that have reached out to Solar System Ambassadors and the Night Step Pride Network and are like have been met with silence. <laughs> Um, so, you know, those are great databases to start out with, to try. I've had some success in st some states, not as great a success in others. So we have heard that comment and that critique. And so that is why we are swooping in and we're trying to be matchmakers for you. Um, so yeah, as Dylan said, we are working with a team to select solar science experts and through our community page, um, which is, it's a modeled off of a social media type of feel. So it's very user-friendly, intuitive. If you use Facebook, this will feel really familiar. We affectionately call it Spacebook. Um, I believe Dylan coined that term. But um, this is the place where you would go to ask questions about subject matter experts and be matched with them. Um, so we're trying to do that work for you if you, if you uh, are hitting a wall with getting NASA subject matter experts through the links in the previous slide, please check this place out. We are here and we wanna be on your team to help you find the right speakers for your event. And in addition to um, having that great uh, connection, we allow, it allows you to communicate with other librarians. We also post uh, regular blogs. Uh, we have guest bloggers um, to talk who, who uh, are real librarians talking about their experience in STEM programming. Uh, so we post regular blogs on the, our community site uh, from librarians talking about what it's like running the type of programming we're talking about on the ground. In addition to all of that great discussions and community forums, uh, we have several different groups for lots of different themes and projects. Uh, and the, the I can't say enough, the Eclipse community has really been going off with tons of great discussions between uh, librarians, subject matter experts, astronomers, all around the Eclipse. It's been really, really cool to see. I highly recommend getting on there. Awesome. Well, thank you, Claire. So now I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about uh, one of my favorite subjects, how to find some hands-on activities for your programming. So if you're thinking about your star party, so I've picked my date, I've uh, gotten uh, a really cool guest speaker to come, maybe a, a professor from like a local university uh, or uh, the president of a local astronomy club. Um, I've picked a citizen science project. I've gotten myself trained through the science starter training on how to be a uh, citizen scientist and how to run that at my library. So uh, what do I do next? What am I gonna do besides uh, just uh, you know, collect data. You probably want to have some hands-on activities that are maybe 
caught a, a, a long aligned in theme with the uh, citizen science project you're doing, or uh, just to have something, some some programming and some activities to go along uh, with your event. Uh, and that is where the StarNet STEM activity clearinghouse. Uh, comes in. So kind of like how SciStarter has their uh, uh, citizen science project finder, uh, we here at StarNet have developed the STEM activity clearinghouse, which is a hands-on activity finder. Uh, and that's at clearinghouse.starnetlibraries.org. Uh, and when you land on that page, uh, you'll have access to over 500 vetted hands-on activities that are ready to go for libraries. Uh, so this is what the homepage looks like when you go to the, st uh, the STEM activity clearinghouse. Uh, and what you'll see there is that there's actually uh, featured collections. Uh, what we do is when we are working on a new project at SSI or Star and StarNet, uh, we usually put together a themed collection of activities uh, that we either create for the, uh, the project or uh, we've gathered that we know are themed appropriate. So right now we actually have a Solar Eclipse Activities for Libraries collection on there. And that has, I think, 14 or 15 different uh, activities, including ones we're going to be continuing to add. We have stuff like uh, a cool, really cool activities, like how to make a uh, solar oven, um, how to turn that solar oven into a water still, if you feel so inclined, um, things like a pocket solar system, uh, how to make a, a printable pocket sun clock. Um, and we even have, because um, we know that we're providing these glasses for you, and we've got the two eclipses coming up in both October and April, we have a printable glasses protector so that your visitors can store their solar science glasses uh, between the eclipses and keep them safe and uh, scratch free so that they're safe to use for the total eclipse after the annual eclipse in April. So really cool tons of uh, really cool activities that are solar science focused on there. Uh, so you can check out that collection. Another way, um, to navigate, ooh, there we go. Another way to navigate uh, the uh, STEM Activity Clearinghouse is just by browsing and searching. So if you click Browse and Filter All Activities, what that'll do is that'll pull up all 500 activities on the Clearinghouse. And what's cool about that is over on the left-hand side on that webpage, you'll see tons of different ways to filter those activities, uh, including time to complete the activity, materials, costs, age group, uh, whether or not it's a take and make activity, if it's something where you're not necessarily going to be doing, say you're setting up a citizen science event and you're just going to do uh, some observations and it's going to be a quick after school event with some teens, but you want to maybe send them home with something, you can look for these uh, take and make event uh, kits here, uh, all sorts of different options. So like, let's say, for example, I'm thinking about hosting my star party and I want to look and I know I'm really focusing on I'm doing this event with uh, maybe a tween STEM club, right? So I know that I've got like a middle school, upper elementary STEM club. So I'm going to look for activities that are appropriate for about nine to 12 year olds. Uh, and I'm going to be keeping them like for about 40 minutes to an hour, maybe an after school program. So I'm going to narrow it down uh, that way. And then I really uh, am thinking about okay, this is maybe the first meeting. I'm really trying to kick off the tween club. So I'm gonna look for something that's a little easier list. So I'm gonna look for an easy difficulty activity. Um, and I'm at a library that does a lot of bilingual programming. Uh, my tween STEM club is really, really focused on as both Spanish speakers and English speakers. So I'm gonna look for bilingual activities as well. And when you enter all those, those filters in, well, you'll see it's taken that 530 activities and narrowed that down to 14 uh, uh, different activities that I can do uh, that uh, are ready to go for me. Um, so there's tons of different ways to use the STEM Activity Clearinghouse uh, to find some activities. Uh, as I was saying earlier, maybe you um, are really interested in hosting some, a citizen science project uh, for your library around the eclipse, but uh, you're not necessarily sure that the solar science or the eclipse science ones aren't for you. Uh, you can look for themes. One of the things, the filters on the STEM Activity Clearinghouse is you can filter by subject matter or theme. So maybe you're, uh, especially, you're, maybe you're in a warm part of the country and the annular uh, eclipse in October is going to be on a really sunny, hot day and you want to have a water themed activity so people can cool down while they're doing that. You can look uh, on there for some uh, water themed activities as well. Um, so here you can see those are all the filters that I've done uh, and narrowed that down. So this is what one of the pages will look like when you uh, click on one of the activity pages. It'll have an activity uh, link to open the activity. We usually link out to the original source uh, unless it's no longer hosted there and then we uh, host the PDF ourselves. 
uh, but you'll see all of the filters on the right hand side that are uh, for that activity, what age groups it's appropriate for, the time to complete it, the cost of associated materials, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and also on these pages, some really, really cool things. We have related programming resources for each one of these activities. So they're not just the hands-on activity. We also um, have hints for uses in libraries. We'll put some, uh, very often put some text there uh, with some tips and tricks. Uh, we'll also have related links to either the same activity from a different source or a, a very closely related activity. To, so you can draw some inspiration on uh, some twists that you might be able to put on that activity or how it might be deployed in different contexts. We have a link to that original source. And one of my favorite things that we do because we are at a library focused association uh, is that we put there uh, links to WorldCat listings for related books for these activities. Uh, so if you're thinking, if you're really thinking expansively about uh, some of your Eclipse Citizen Science programming, uh, finding activities on here uh, and you want to put together maybe a reading list for your uh, visitors, uh, there's a book recommendations for a lot of our uh, activities as well. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of ways to build out step-by-step -step th these kind of citizen science events uh, using uh, some of our resources. Uh, one thing I also wanna note too, is we're always asking if you do uh, use one of our uh, the activities from the STEM Activity Clearinghouse, we have a review section. These review sections both give tips to us about how we might be able to create additional resources that help libraries run these activities better and is a great way for librarians to, uh, to know when they're checking out the STEM Activity Clearinghouse uh, that, library, uh, that other librarians have used these activities and either like them or dislike them. So we're always asking for honest reviews uh, on there. So please, please do not hesitate uh, to leave a review if you've uh, used any of our STEM Activity Clearinghouse resources. Uh, so once again, uh, that's the STEM Activity Clearinghouse, uh, clearinghouse.starnetlibraries.org. Cannot recommend enough. Uh, checking that out if you haven't already, or even if you're familiar with it, we're adding activities uh, uh, all the time. So go check it out anew. Uh, so now I'm gonna turn this back to Roland, talk a little bit about registering your event through SciStarter uh, and uh, getting your event registered on the SciStarter calendar. Thank you. So uh, it's very easy to add an event to SciStarter. You simply have to sign up uh, for a free account and then visit this page you'll have to enter some details about your project and how to, how users can uh, participate be it an online project or so be it a virtual event or uh, an event which you have to attend in person and we will publish it as soon as uh, you you submit it Thanks so much. Uh, Chantal, yes, I wanted to make sure I pointed this out. Yes, this, if you have joined late uh, and have missed part of this webinar or have to leave early today, we are going to be posting the recording of this webinar on our YouTube channel, as well as on the Starnet webinar uh, page as well. Uh, so now we're going to talk a little about, okay, so now we've gotten, we've picked our citizen science project. We've got an amazing speaker. We've picked out some hands-on activities. We're good to go. Um, but how do I get people to my event? That's where promotion comes in. So first I'm gonna talk about a couple of resources that we've put together uh, that both SciStarter and SSI have put together. And then I thought I would open up the floor to talk a little bit, um, to open up the floor to y'all to talk about some strategies that you have done to promote events in the past because I, we know that y'all are so creative and have such great ideas. Uh, so first, uh, SciStarter has put together uh, some really cool free resources at SciStarter.org slash library promotional resources. This has social media uh, assets, images, all sorts of citizen science goodies um, to create uh, some really fantastic uh, promotional materials for yourself. Uh, we've also, um, if you've been liking any of the graphics that we've put the, together uh, in this presentation, um, all of the graphics that we've developed, um, our wonderful in-house uh, designer Amy uh, has made some really, really amazing uh, solar eclipse activities for libraries, uh, backgrounds, icons, uh, all sorts of stuff, and uh, some really cool ready to go flyers for the eclipses as well. Um, so that link is both here and in the Getting Started with Steel blog post. Um, so you can use any of those assets, um, they're there for you to use. Um, so combining these two, especially if you're doing a citizen science uh, eclipse event, 
uh, or solar science event, combining the resources from these two, throwing them together in a, a publisher file or a word file, or even using them on Canva. Um, if anybody's familiar with using Canva to create some uh, uh, promotional materials, really, really great options we've tried to, to, to make available for you. Um, so I thought um, while we have some ideas about promoting events, um, why don't we open it up to the floor? What are some ways that y'all have promoted events in the past that uh, either in straightforward ways or out of the box creative ways? Either you can, uh, I'll, uh, you can either unmute or feel free to share in the chat. All right, Katie said flyers, a website calendar. Website calendars are really fantastic. Facebook events, sharing out on social media. Um, that's always great. In fact, some of the, um, both the site starter and the uh, seal um, links that I have on screen right now have social media ready assets as well. So those are um, not just flyers, but we also have those graphics available for you to make social media posts. Uh, Sarah saying sending PDFs to local schools to send home with parents, absolutely. Uh, one thing uh, I've uh, been, been lucky enough to expose to, if anybody has uh, been using Peachtree, um, or their community, their local school district uses Peachtree or a similar app, um, these graphics we've made are really great for putting together something to send out through Peachtree. Um, we've got people saying, oh, uh, let's see, we have a newsletter that goes out twice per month, they're listing all of our events. Regular newsletters are really fantastic. Interviews with local newspapers, always great to get the local word out. Uh, Janet said, talk of uh, a forthcoming programs in your current program, get the parents to post on closed social media platforms, which reach the parents in the community. Absolutely, that's a really fantastic idea. Um, always really great. I mean, that's one of the things we try and do here is we plug upcoming events when we're talking about uh, at our current one. Uh, so getting that continuity, and that's a really great way to build a local uh, a, a base of visitors who are coming to programs repeatedly, um, as well as hopefully maybe, you know, a really great way to build volunteer core, um, things like that as you're creating that kind of community of repeated visitors uh, who come to the events. Ask the newspaper to do an article about the event, always great. Email subscribers, social media, local newspapers and radio, NPR, local public radio is a great option. Uh, community college and local schools, also really great options and also a really great way to maybe potentially make a connection with a guest speaker or a subject matter expert, um, especially if you're talking about uh, local science uh, educators, um, really, really great connections to make there. Uh, chatting with patrons, cross-marketing programs, press releases, uh, another plug for uh, newsletters, uh, really fantastic ideas. Science clubs, that's another really great one. If you have a science club you're hosting at your library or science clubs at local schools or community science clubs, all really, really fantastic ideas. Um, so as y'all can see, uh, there's a ton of different ways to get the, the word out. And um, I'm sure we've even, we barely scratched the surface um, ideas. Ooh, somebody said, don't forget to inform local scouting groups. That's another great one. Uh, a lot of uh, youth organizations, um, especially ones that do badges like scouts, have some sort of astronomy, science uh, uh, badges that they might have for that. So uh, reaching out to them, seeing if there's ways you can coordinate uh, is, uh, match their requirements, a really, really great way to plan some uh, uh, events. 4-H clubs are another great example. Uh, Vicki said they send Canvas slides to schools for their programs to wrote in on their monitors and hallways and classrooms. A really, really fantastic idea, providing digital assets, not just physical assets. If, especially when you're talking about local high schools, um, if you have, are lucky enough to be in an area where the local school has funding to do their own kind of TV announcements or anything like that, providing graphics and digital resources, uh, uh, digital versions of any flyers you create uh, to those organizations so they can share that out on their digital platform and double your reach that way is a really, really smart idea. Thanks for sharing that, Vicki. Um, all right, so we've got just about 10 minutes left. And in the last 10 minutes of these webinars, what we really like to do is open the floor and uh, let y'all ask any questions you have about uh, what we've talked about today, uh, the SEAL project in general, 
citizen science. I know that we've kind of rushed through things. We did our intro webinar uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, this this one we've been kind of barreling through with resources, but not really talking about citizen science itself. So if y'all have any questions about anything, um, I will go ahead and uh, open the floor to you. All right, Tammy said, where do we go for the glasses? So in the Getting Started with SEAL blog post, you'll see a link to register for uh, your uh, free solar uh, viewing glasses. I will also pull that link out separate right now, unless Beatrice or Claire has that handy. Um, ooh, sorry, I got so many windows open for this webinar. Uh, just pull that link. I have it. I can put it in. Perfect. Thanks, Claire. Uh, Amanda, uh, uh, the, I think Beatrice put a link to our social, our YouTube channel uh, in the chat. Uh, we have the first webinar. If you missed it, that intro to citizen science. If you're, you spent the last 50 minutes going, okay, this sounds great, but I don't know what citizen science is. Uh, we have a great intro to citizen science, uh, also hosted with SciStarter, uh, where they go into depth about uh, the trainings that they offer on their website. Uh, and how to get started with uh, becoming a citizen scientist. Uh, and that link is, uh, the, the recorded link to that is the, on our YouTube channel, uh, as well as in the Getting Started with SEAL blog post. Um, Donna said, will we receive an email with the link to recording for this webinar? Um, we, uh, I, we will not be sending out uh, email links to this, but we, it will be posted both on our YouTube channel, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, and the link to the recording will be posted in our Getting Started with SEAL blog post. So I invite you to go ahead and uh, bookmark those uh, to keep up with uh, when that uh, email is posted. I'll also be posting it to the uh, StarNet community website in the Eclipse group as well. Uh, Sarah asked, do you all have any activities on what to do when it is a cloudy day? That's my biggest fear, getting everything planned and then we don't see it. Actually, that is a really great uh, question, Sarah. And a lot of the activities we uh, have developed uh, for the Solar Eclipse Activities for Libraries program have both extensions or twists you can put them on. Uh, so like I was mentioning earlier, the solar, uh, the pizza box solar oven. Uh, the pizza box solar oven also comes with an extension uh, to create, if it's a less than uh, sunny day or it's a little less warm, how to turn that into a solar still that you can either, uh, that you can still use on a cloudy day to talk about water purification and some of the physics involved there. Uh, so that, oh, thank you so much, Beatrice, for putting that link. Uh, Beatrice just put the link to our first webinar in this series in the chat. Um, so there are uh, many ways, and a lot of our uh, activities on the STEM Activity Clearinghouse have facilitation guides and ideas on how to change those programs from high, uh, in person to hybrid. Uh, how to the, a lot of the tips, uh, if you look at the um, programming resources on those individual pages, have advice on how to change those. Um, but uh, so yeah, so there are a ton of ways of, of coming up with ways to to do these these eclipse programs, uh, the, the solar activities. Uh, even if it is a cloudy day or you have to do it inside. Claire also just put in the chat as well, Eclipse Chalk uh, Art is one of the favorites that uh, can be great. You can do the Eclipse of the Clouds. There's a uh, ton of activities that like those chalk art activities, pocket solar system. Uh, so there are a ton of uh, activities available in the STEM Activity Clearinghouse uh, that you can have as backups if you're not gonna be able to go outside. Um, would you please post the link for the program that has the glasses protectors? Uh, so that is, is that, Claire, have we, we posted that one? Or... Yep, that is on the clearinghouse and Beatrice just put it in the chat. Excellent. So yeah, that activity for the glasses protectors, that printable glasses protector is uh, in the collection, uh, the Solar Eclipse Activities for Libraries collection. Uh, let's see. I had a program on sun prints using the sun to make cyanotypes. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Uh, really, really cool idea. Oh, but it had a cloudy day. Oh, that's a bummer. Um, there, another thing you might be able to do is uh, one thing I've done for uh, these, these kind of activities is if you can get your hands on like a grow light of some sort, like a, um, I've gotten a couple of like LEDs off of uh, uh, Amazon or just at your local Walmart. Uh, and a bright LED lamp can be used indoor for a lot of the stuff with shadow tracing, um, any of those kind of activities where you just are using the sun's light. Um, a bright LED lamp and bringing that inside can be a great way to adapt that activity if it is a cloudy or rainy day. I know I live in the Pacific Northwest. 
rainy days are a common problem, uh, well, not problem, but a uh, hard to predict when the sun will all will be 100% out here in the Pacific Northwest. So I definitely feel the cloudy and rainy day concerns. Um, let's see, just to double check, if we requested the Eclipse classes, are we guaranteed the number of classes that we were if yes, when can we expect delivery? Uh, Brenda, that's a great question. Um, right now, uh, we everybody who has filled out the complete application and provided the, the administration letter uh, uh, of support for that should be receiving the amount they requested. Um, uh, Sky, our uh, admin person, is working hard getting all of these shipments out. Um, if you have any concerns about uh, your order or you would like to confirm that everything is a-okay for your library's glasses request. Um, I'm sure Sky is gonna really appreciate me uh, putting their email address in the chat right now so they get flooded with questions, but the Sky Reed Mills uh, is our point person uh, for, for sending out those kits. If you have any questions about whether or not your application is complete or just wanna double check that, you can reach out to them at the email address I just put in the chat, uh, S Reed Mills, and do saying woohoo PNW, right, right? Uh, I, although it's a gorgeous day to day, and I've got to say, this is slightly off topic, I just found out about an hour ago it's going to be 78 degrees and sunny here on Saturday, and I'm going to soak up so much vitamin D this weekend. I'm so excited. Um, Chantal asked uh, for the get, link to the Getting Started with Seal blog post, which Beatrice has put in the chat. Um, so it's also a great idea for grow lamps. Yeah, so I, I can't recommend that enough. I, I, a $20 LED grow lamp is a really great act, uh, replacement for the sun uh, if you need to uh, for, for all sorts of uh, solar-based and light activities. Um, all right. I've been talking my ear off. Does anybody have any questions? I know I've been talking nonstop. Does anybody want to unmute and ask a question or throw a, a question into the chat uh, that they were worried about me stopping talking uh, in order to ask? All right. Um, I guess not. All right. I, you know, I was, oh, ooh, for cloudy days, you could hold a shadow puppet show featuring the sun and moon as the puppets. Ooh, that's a great idea, Janet. Um, uh, and that's a really great idea. Um, if you have the art supplies anyway, or you've gotten the supplies for a certain activity, um, y'all are so creative. A uh, great way to come up with um, maybe ideas uh, to share these kind of ideas. So the, the Starnet community website is a great way, play, way, uh, way to ask other librarians uh, what they've done in similar circumstances. So I know that I seem like I'm getting paid per plug for the Starnet community site, but I promise you, uh, I, it's a really, really great resource that I invite you all to, to sign up for. Um, all right, I am always worried that we are gonna be over or under time and it magically works out that it's exactly an hour when we do these. And I think I, I, I must have the magic touch. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Claire and Roland for presenting with me today. I want to thank all of you uh, for coming and uh, having this great discussion around uh, programming ideas and citizen science. Um, I couldn't be more thrilled uh, that we get to share this information with y'all. Um, and uh, I'm really excited um, to see what, um, hopefully y'all share out what you're doing on the Starnet community page. Uh, and we can uh, keep in touch and see what uh, y'all are working on. Um, so I'm going to put my email in the chat once more. If you have any questions about anything we've covered today, any of our upcoming webinars, um, or anything about SEAL uh, in general, uh, go ahead and shoot me an email. I, if I can't answer it, I'll direct you in the right place you can. Uh, so thanks again for coming today. Thanks, Claire and Roland. And I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week. Thanks, everybody.